Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Casual Cash. First, let me just say that your comments and positive feedback on the videos so far have been incredible, and I'm glad you guys are enjoying the content. On this video, we're going to be giving an insider's view of my 130,000 Rand Easy Equities portfolio here in South Africa. Each of the companies and funds we're invested in, along with all the profits we've made and all of the losses, and there are some new ones since the last video. So sit back, stay tuned, and let's get started. I say it all the time here on the channel that we talk about all the profits and all the losses and I think that transparency is important because you're here to build wealth, improve your financial position or work towards financial freedom and you can do that best by seeing the full real time picture to see that there are ups and downs and different ideas of how to deal with them. So our last Easy Equities video did very well. But 2022 has brought with it some ups and downs and we're going to go through what our 130,000 Rand portfolio is looking like now. So without delay, let's jump right in. First things first, January came with a lot of corrections in the markets. We saw some benefits and others correcting downwards. But now in February, our portfolio includes 6,500 Rand cash and is standing at 131,625 Rand. We're going to take a look at each investment in that amount and at the end of the video look at the totals and what percentages are for South Africa, offshore, cryptocurrency, etc. Let's kick it right off with Accelerate Property Fund. So as you can see, we have owned this share since 2015 over the last seven years and we've re-bought into it a couple of times as well. To be honest with you, the share price is not going to set the world on fire. It's not something that's going to skyrocket. But the dividend income that we've received over those last seven years has really been exemplary. So it's something that I really like and I keep in my portfolio because those dividend incomes are really great. At the same time, it's up 11% over the last six months and 25% over the year. So it does seem to be doing well, but those dividends are something to hold on to. Next up, let's chat about ARK Investments African Rainbow Capital. We're talking about rain, we're talking about time bank, we're talking about 65% growth in the last six months and 87% growth in the last year. Our share holding is up 10%. You can see the share tends to move in waves, but over the next five to 10 years, this is really going to be something special. So it's something we're pretty fond of keeping in our portfolio. Next up, we're going to talk about Arrowhead. You might know it now as Fairvest. The reason is that the company undertook a merger and changed their name to Fairvest. It's the reason you see logo coming soon. And also why this is the max view that we have on the chart. With most of the real estate investment trusts, they haven't recovered well in terms of their share price from COVID. But these are about the dividends and they do seem to be one of the best performing in terms of dividends in the markets. So we've held on to this for the last five years and we're going to keep doing so because these dividends are really something special and they add a lot of income to our portfolio. Next up, let's chat about Avenge. This probably needs a whole video in itself. In their last reporting period, they reported an operating income of 218 million as opposed to 280 million the year prior. They cited COVID, they cited the unrest and the riots that happened in South Africa the last year, which hinder construction, which makes sense, but the markets didn't like it. However, our shareholding is still up 22%. And at the price it's at now, it's something to hold onto for the next five to 10 years because at such a low entry and honestly such a well-functioning company these days, you can really see some compounded growth in the years to come. All right, let's chat about Indu Place, actually a subsidiary of Fairvest, their residential arm. Very similar, not much in terms of the share price, but the dividends are at 8.6% very hard to come by and that's why we keep these in the portfolio to keep that income and cash coming in all right purple group this is the owner of easy equities among quite a few other companies in their stable and guys this has been the star performer of the portfolio in this last year our shareholding is up 82.43 percent up 2457 rand off of an initial 3000 investment last six month growth 94 percent 
last growth over one year, 228 percent it reminds me of a young capitec bank this is definitely something we'll be keeping into the years to come and i look forward to seeing this growth continue right rebosis this is what i call a throwaway share it's something that i don't care if it goes to zero or if it goes to a hundred thousand take a look at the max chart here we purchased this in 2017 and we haven't expected anything in terms of its price or its dividends. What we're doing is just holding on to see what happens. We don't have a lot in it. If it goes well, that's great. If not, really don't mind. But at the same time, over the last year, it's gone up 41%. So it could be something to look at for a penny stock. Next up is Steinhoff. You know it, I know it. But what the world knows right now is that they have reached settlements for all of their creditors after the accounting fraud and scandal that they went through. Also went down to penny stock status. And right now, our purchase in September is up 27%. Over the last six months, their return is 107% for the share and the last year, 115%. What's left is quite a few fundamental, strong fundamental businesses that the next five to 10 years, we might see some good compounded growth on. This next one, I'm not lying to you when I say it's probably my favorite share in the portfolio, which is strange to say because it's only up 5%, six month return of 8% and one year return of 11%, but it is the most stable growth and dividend share that I own. Since we bought it in 2019, it has never missed a single dividend payment and it keeps on increasing year after year both share price and dividend distribution. So I really love this. It's a self-storage real estate investment trust, and I might actually look to buy a bit more in the year to come. Next up is Facebook. Again, might need a video on its own. Its reports came out and over its 2.1 billion daily users, it lost 500,000 daily users, which it attributes to the rise of TikTok. That makes up just 0.02% of its total daily users, but the market didn't like it. So the share price is down. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this one just yet. Sell it or keep it because uh, it's an opportunity for it to grow with the money it has. Very weird one. We're gonna hold on to it and see what happens in the months to come. Next up is Tesla, the company that sends cars into space and apparently its share price as well. We bought this in May last year and we're up 63.11%. It's been up as high as 113%, 31% over the last six months, 118% uh, since October 2020. This is one that you just hang on to and ride the waves and see how far up it'll go. But a very cool company and we're glad to have it. Next up, Retway Global Property. I really enjoy this one. You would think it's dividend distribution, but in fact, its dividends are automatically reinvested into the fund for exponential growth. We're up 11.39%, and over the last year, it's been up 19%. So let's talk about the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500, both of which we did videos on recently. You'll notice a trend where a lot of the markets have depreciated in January. That's because all the Federal Reserves are looking to introduce interest rate increases based off the 0% we've had during COVID and the markets are correcting to it. But I also think it's a good place for an entry point. So we're up 3.25% on this NASDAQ 100. Over the last year, it's still up 11% in total. S&P 500 is similar with 1.3% over six months and 19% over last year. I think both of them might have a good entry point at the moment for some additional growth. Fourth industrial revolution is like riding a roller coaster. The share price just tends to go up and down, but we're up 3.4% from our purchase. Last six months is down 15%, but if you look at the maximum return over the last uh, five years, still up 90%, so I'm not too sure to think of this one, but we're gonna hang on to it. All right, S&P Global 1200. This is the ESG. It's about environment, uh, social impact, and governance. Basically, the do-good companies, and it's doing good. We're up 11.47%. Over the last year, it's been up 10.39%, so we'll hang on to this one as well. Let's talk about the S&P 500 Infotech. 
kind of a mixture of the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100. Obviously, very heavy in terms of tech and uh, the IT industry, up 25% from our purchase. And over the last year, it has gone up 19% as well. Okay, these ones look weird. You'll see that they're 100 Rand each. It's part of the experiment on our channel where we test over the year lottery ticket purchases versus the stock market. We put 100 Rand into each of them, stocks and lottery tickets, and we see what wins out into the year. So far, the stock market is winning, but you can see we're down 0.3% for the S&P 500. FTSE is down 0.9, but the JSC top 40 is up 3.98%. That just goes to show how important diversification is. Next up is the prescient income provider, up just 0.91%, which is exactly where we want it to be. The purpose of this is not to sway too much either way, doing exactly that, and it's giving us a great 5% dividend income, uh, just like clockwork every single month. Our global growth fund is not much of a muchness. It's diversified across the entire world, won't set the world on fire, but it is up 5.24%. Next, and our latest video is EC10. I've been quite happy with the performance on this one. We saw a dip. We saw how the markets have gone down over the last couple of months, and we saw an entry point. Just over the last two weeks, we're up 12.84%, but this is cryptocurrency, so let's see what happens. All right, just to round off the portfolio, we still have 6,517 Rand in cash, and that's with a lot of other income that should be coming in. I have a lot of plans in the investments for 2022. Let's round up this portfolio. As you can see, we've broken it down into the categories, equities at 62,000 or 48% of the total, exchange traded notes at 4,503%, ETFs at 28%, uh, 28,000 and 22%. And then the unit trust at 25,019%. Externally managed, 2,602%. Our cryptocurrency, we've got another account, but for easy equities, it's at 1,101% and then cash at 5%. Let's take a look at these two differences, capital appreciation and dividends. In terms of the allocation, we have 53,000 Rand towards capital appreciation, 72,000 Rand towards dividend stocks, which is 42% and 58% respectively of the 125,000 that we have invested in all of these companies. So that is it for today's episode. If you guys enjoyed this video, please click that like button. It really helps a lot. And if you like seeing this portfolio and you want to see how it does in the long term, as well as our future purchases and sales, along with general finance and investing information, you're welcome to subscribe to this channel or take a look at our other videos. And if you have any question at all about the investments or in general, you're welcome to ask it in the comments. I reply to every single one. So until then, I'll see you guys next time on Casual Cash. Cheers.